A top player cheats his way to fame. A massive YouTuber gets thrown into a bitter drama. The top dog lies for years on end. Today, we'll go over the biggest cheating scandals this game has ever seen. Stick around because each event gets even crazier than the next. If you played the game back in 2017, you definitely know who Noctifly was, a talented French star grinder who rose to the top of the leaderboard after a stupidly hard grind. 20,000 stars in 3 months. I don't even have a fraction of that. Not only was he a great star grinder, he was a good demon slayer too. Noctify breezed over a couple top 50s, and with all this skill, he was seen as one of the best players in the game. With his number one spot in place, Noctify would take on his biggest project yet, verifying the level of Zafkiel, a collab between him and another French player named Darwin, which had ridiculous timings and wave sections. After a short grind with about 10,000 thousand attempts, he beat it and posted the recording online. Comments poured in, congratulating him on his achievements. Zafkiel was a top 5 at the time. You've probably never beaten an extreme demon, let alone a top 5. But in the footage that he posted, it suspiciously froze near the end at 92%. This implied he cut the level, meaning he brought two recordings of two different attempts and edited them together to make it look like it was done in one seamless run. People are usually more secretive when they try to get away with cuts. But Noctify's video had this massive, obvious black hole at the end which is just a bit funny to me. Did he not think he'd get caught? With the cut in Zafkiel, suspicion grew for Noctify's other achievements and distrust exploded when he took on Death Corridor. Like Zafkiel, it was a crazy hard level with iconic wave sections. I mean, just look at this. One YouTuber, Tar Selux, couldn't believe that Noctify cleared such a hard map and he made an exposing video. In it, he showed two clips of Noctiply playing it and pointed out how the movements looked very similar, implying that he used a macro hack. That's a tool that lets you save a set of clicks on your PC and run it back, basically making the game play itself. Tosh would come back again, this time exposing this layout that Noctify claimed to beat. At first glance, it looks legitimate enough. There's no obvious no clipping or hacks or anything like that. But just stop and look at how the wave entered the portal over here here. When waves enter reverse portals like this, they switch gravity immediately, but here, it's going in a lot deeper than usual. This shows that the portal isn't being used to flip the gravity, and instead, there's a secret blue pad in there. Now, why would he do that? Well, if there's a blue pad there, then there's probably a blue pad at every other part in the level, making the entire thing completely auto. Hiding blue pads like that is as simple as setting their opacity to zero with the alpha trigger. They usually play a little animation when you touch them, even when invisible. But if you play in low detail mode, this little giveaway is hidden too. And the most damning piece of evidence against this run is the fact that he didn't record his clicks. Noctify never did in any of his completions. Showing clicks is a very easy way to filter out hackers as it's pretty hard to fake. Like if I'm showing you a recording of me playing this hard level, it's hard to tell if I was actually playing or not if I didn't show you my clicks too. For all you know, I could just be lounging around, not even touching my mouse while I'm letting a macro play for me. The fact that he never showed his clicks was very sketchy. Man, this Tosh Deluxe guy sure is doing a great job at exposing Noctify. Wouldn't it be funny if he got exposed for his own actions in a controversy that nearly brought down his entire career? That's called foreshadowing. More and more people jumped onto the exposing bandwagon, including the famous player Riot, who pointed out that Noctify claimed to have gotten 98% on the Hell Factory, a top 50, even though it's impossible to die at 98% on this level, there's no obstacles there to kill you. Noctify tried to respond to all the accusations, but it was no use. Practically the entire community sided against him, and Robtop banned him, not before renaming his account to Hacktofly. <laughs> Nice one, Rob. With his back against the wall, he finally gave up and admitted to cheating on many of his top runs. It's unclear if he also hacked his way to the number one spot, but that didn't matter. His career was over. The game's biggest player who held the top spot and the top demons turned out to be the game's biggest fraud. But this doesn't compare to what's coming up next, so stick around. 
In 2017, Toss Deluxe verified the top 5 level Devil Vortex. It was a huge accomplishment for him, but he was just some YouTuber, the same guy who babbled on about Noctifly just a few months earlier. He hadn't beaten anything this hard before, so many were suspicious, and they attempted to expose him. One video made by a rising player, Nepesta, got a lot of attention because it brought up a very interesting point. He found this weird pattern of saws in Tosh's copy of Devil Vortex. No other versions of the level had this, meaning that he must have placed them himself. There are exactly 54 objects in this structure. That's a very interesting number, as after poking around in the level, the Pesta found that there were 54 audible clicks in some of the hardest parts of Devil Vortex. Audible meaning you can place gravity pads and portals to pretend you're clicking, like what Noctify did in that layout you covered earlier. The Pesta theorized that Tosh used 54 portals and pads to auto some parts and recorded himself beating the level. Before posting it to the servers, he went back in, removed the pads and portals, and placed the weird saw structure to balance the object count and make it look like nothing suspicious was happening. Tosh posted a response to this video claiming innocence. After all, he had to defend his prize achievement, verifying a top 5. He pointed out that Nepesta's proof was full of assumptions. He was assuming that Tosh autoed certain parts, even though there's really no proof of him doing it. The 54 object thing was just a very smart guess, not something that can hold up in court. Tosh then said that the saws were simply decorations that he used to buff the level. Devil Vortex was originally a much easier demon before it was given to him. This is a bit weird though, cause there were already decorated saws that were left behind by the level's creators. He could have copied and pasted them wherever he saw fit. And if Tosh really wanted to use his own, he could have just made one, two, or three of them not create this mess. Some of the saws here aren't even completed, so I have no clue what he was doing. But maybe he was just screwing around. Tosh pointed out that if he was truly being malicious and trying to hide his cheating by balancing the object count, he could have been a lot more secretive about it. Maybe he could have stacked some decorations on top of each other, added invisible blocks, stuff like that. This is way too obvious. To build trust, Tosh did some runs on the level with clicks. All his older recordings were without him, so this added some legitimacy to his defense. Though Nepesta would come back a few weeks later, and this time he brought the help of other top players to expose Tosh. They repeated their accusation of him ordering some parts of Devil Vortex, but they had another piece of evidence against him, this one being much stronger. Look at this recording of Tosh playing an older version of the level. Can you spot what's wrong here? Well look, these clicks are way too consistent, in fact they they align to the pixel. When players are seen doing similar parts in the actual Devil Vortex, their waves are much more varied, so there's definitely something going on here. It can't be gravity portals or pads, as Tosh was playing on high detail mode, and we'd be able to see their animations, so it's likely that he used a macro hack to complete this wave. This shows that he 100% hacked the older version of Devil Vortex, and with this loss in credibility, he probably cheated the actual version or some of his other major achievements too. We could never know for sure though, as he didn't record clicks, so it would be harder to do a deeper exposal of his runs. Regardless, this controversy brought in some of the biggest names in the community, and I find it funny how Tosh Deluxe, the guy who spearheaded Noctify's exposal, was then getting exposed himself. Hey, it looks like you're loving the video. If so, be sure to like and subscribe to tell YouTube how you feel. It'll show you more content like this. But anyway, let's head into the biggest seeding scandal this game has ever seen. Enjoy the rest of the video. Many are blessed with amazing art skills, and others with prime athletic ability. But for Space UK, a British Geometry Dash player, it seems like he was given incredible GD skills at birth. He'd first beat the code, an easy demon, but in just a few months, he worked his way up to Wazaretta, a top 20, and beat it as his fourth ever demon. And he'd continue to amaze by completing the Golden, a top 3 level, as his fifth demon. Some question 
questioned his legitimacy considering how fast he improved. Usually, it would take years to work up to his skill level. I've been playing since I was 8, and even I still have trouble with easy demons. But nothing was off with this footage. They had clicks, and there were no obvious hacks or anything like that. So it seemed like he was just the one. The one guy blessed with an incredible raw skill and destined to take over the game. But of course, knowing the title of this video, you can probably sense that something sinister was going on with Space UK. When he beat the Golden, he accidentally played with a noclip hack on. He didn't realize this until 20 minutes later when he had already felt the rush of excitement. Probably pissed off, he posted the completion video anyway, thinking that if he got caught, he'd just give up and quit. But miraculously, nobody found out he hacked. Modern cheat detecting tools like Hitbox View didn't exist, so it was hard to spot the noclip in such a dark level. And on top of that, he had been consistently posting 100% legitimate progress on his levels, so he had built up a lot of trust. And so, Space actually got away with it. He took on Kinos next, a brutal top 5 known for its wave gameplay. Space got many crushing fails on it, and he allegedly managed to beat it. But a bug in his recording software made the screen freeze, and all his footage was lost. He tried rebeating it, but going through the hell of clearing it twice was just not worth it. Considering how he fooled everybody with the noclip run of the golden, maybe he could get away with hacking again. He purchased Zbots, a program for creating macros, and used it to be Kinos. He then recorded some clicks over the footage to make it seem more legitimate and posted it online. And to his surprise, his cheated completion was accepted again. From this point on, he'd continue hacking in this way. He was a pretty talented player, so he'd play top levels, but when he got bored of them, he'd just use Zbot to hack them because it was so easy to get away with. He'd continue to breeze through extremes, and with how fast he was able to slay demons, everybody knew he was destined to become the top player. By then, the demon list was created. It's a website created by top players who rank the hardest levels in the game. It also gives players a score based on how many top extremes they've beaten. So as Space kept cheating through 2021, he'd shoot up the list. Tartarus was the then hardest level in the game, and Space hacked through it. That alone would have made him one of the best players in the game up to that point, but Space set his sights on something bigger. Tartarus had been top 1 ever since it was verified in 2020. It had been stuck up there for a while, and by then, people were itching to dethrone it. Space took on the level Slaughterhouse, a map with brutal wave sections set to overtake Tartarus, and with Zbot, he made very quick work of it, verifying it just over over a week after it was given to him. <laughs> oh I can't fucking react otherwise I'm gonna cough so much. Three other contenders for the top spot were verified around the same time, but Slaughterhouse won over all of them. The story with this level, Hard Machine, is pretty heartbreaking. As the verifier desperately wanted to one day have the top spot, he beat the level months before Slaughterhouse was verified, and it was definitely harder than Tartarus. But Space UK downplayed its difficulty, and because his opinion as a top player carried a lot of weight, it placed number 5 instead, even though he probably didn't even play much of the level. With the boost of verifying the hardest level in the game, Space jumped to the top spot on the Demonless leaderboard. Into 2022, he'd work his way down the list, breezing through the top 75 levels. At some point, it would seem like he'd complete an extreme demon every other day, though some were still suspicious of his skill. As Slaughterhouse was being verified, a player named Colo made a video in which he dug through Space's recording and pointed out some suspicious click delay in it. Though his findings were 100% legitimate, he wasn't taken seriously. Space UK was the top dog, and because Cola was attacking the community's hero, he was disliked, bombs, made fun of, and pushed out of the community. By mid-2020, Space completed the entirety of the top 75 levels, becoming the second ever person to do so. In one of my older videos, I said he was the number one greatest of all time, because it really seemed like he was. His skill was unparalleled, but of course, it was all a lie. And his lie made me look like a dumbass in front of a million people. 
Thanks a lot, Space. From this point on, his activity would drop. In the summer of 2022, he'd unlist all his videos, and he removed his account on the demon list, leaving his top spot to be taken. He apparently did this to focus on becoming a pro Osu player, but in hindsight, he probably just felt guilty about cheating. With him holding on to the top spots, he was stealing the spotlight away from other top players who truly deserved it. His biggest victim was probably Crisis, who was number two, just behind space for months. Though not long after, he would return to Geometry Dash. The fame and validation that came from being the top player roped him back in. He also made a stupid amount of money from his videos. For a 4 minute clip, you would probably make around 1-2 to dollars per thousand views. So just take a look at his channel and do the math. That's a lot of money for just some guy playing video games. His comeback would be short lived though, as the Demonless mod team would finally catch on to what Polo pointed out earlier, and they would ban Space after determining that his recent completions were hacked. One mod, Paco, took the evidence they found and made an exposing video, bringing the entire scandal to light. Space's credibility was severely damaged, and people were finally questioning whether all his completions were hacked too. He tried to weasel out, saying that only the levels after he beat the top 75 were hacked. However, just a few hours later, the Demonless team would find the smoking gun that finally exposed every single one of Space UK's runs. Remember how I said that he used Zbot to create macros and cheats? Well, the creator of the tool added a useful way to catch cheaters using the hack. When Zbot is enabled, the text on the level complete screen is just slightly smaller than normal. And because Space used Zbot often, nearly all his recordings had this smaller text, and he was completely exposed once and for all. This cheat detection was known for a while, but nobody ever checked for it. Zbot was a paid program, and most cheaters usually use free ones, so there wasn't really a need to look out for it much. With his entire career exposed, Space UK deleted his YouTube channel. He kept his Twitter up and posted an apology, though it's pretty hard to accept, considering how he tried to weasel out of the controversy by claiming that only a few levels were hacked. It seems like he was only sorry because he got caught, not because he was actually sorry. The cheating wasn't all bad though. The fact that top players were competing against a hacker probably pushed him to work even harder, and by beating Slaughterhouse, he surely pushed the difficulty limits of the game even further. I mean, before Space, the demon list was stuck like this with Tartarus at number 1 for months, but after Space, there were a couple dozen levels harder than it. As the scandal was dying down, Space would return to YouTube and beat the Golden, for real this time. No no clip, no Zbot, no nothing. Yes! 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 And he'd follow it up by beating Tartarus just a few days later. It doesn't seem like he'll fully come back to the game, although it would be cool to see him repeat everything he hacked. He surely has the skill to do it. Beating those two levels in just a few days shows that there's a lot of potential in him. But considering the huge impact he's had on the game, it's unlikely that he'd be welcomed back openly. If you want to see who the real greatest player of all time is, be sure to check out this video. But anyway, I thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.